Greetings my friends, it's Top Hat Runner here, and today I'm going to be showing you how to modify an AEG barrel to fit your KJW, KCO2, Tactical 22, Ruger 1022, whatever you want to call the thing. This, even though uh, some companies like RA Tech and Falcon make precision inner barrels for the KCO2, some people still want to get the AEG brand barrels that they know and trust, like PDI, which is what I have right now or Mad Bull, or Prometheus, or EDGI, or whatnot, into their KCO2, because that's the brand of barrel they're most comfortable with. So I'm going to be showing you everything you need to know about how to modify an AEG barrel to fit into your KJW KCO2. If this modification seems too difficult for you, because this is a rather long and difficult modification to get this to work, uh, send me an email at tophatairsmithing at gmail.com and we could probably work something out I could get this done for you modify an AEG barrel to fit your KCO2 so anyway here's the tutorial on how to get an AEG barrel into your KCO2 greetings my friends it's Top Hat Runner here and today I'm going to be showing you how to get an AEG barrel into your KJW KCO2 what all needs to be done to an AEG barrel to get it to work in your KJW let's go ahead and compare the two different kinds of barrels and see what exactly about them is different now the silverish steel one on the right, or the top, sorry, I'm looking at my camera sideways, on the top is a PDI inner barrel that I'm going to be putting into this gun, and on the bottom is the stock KJW inner barrel. Now you'll notice two differences right away. You'll notice that the KJW's barrel has these rings cut into it, and also that the little hop-up window on the KJW inner barrel goes all the way back whereas the AEG barrel does not have the rings and it does not have you know, the hop-up window all the way back. However, on the bottom of the barrel, they both have a little cutout to keep the bucking from rotating. These cutouts are the same width. This PDI barrel is a little, little tiny bit narrower than the cutout on the KJW barrel, but this PDI barrel's cutout here is narrower than normal AEG barrels and it's still going to work fine. This second ring here I really don't know what that's used for. Maybe you can put like an O-ring in here to get a better air seal. That's really not necessary. You are, however, going to want to cut the ring into your barrel before you extend the hop-up window. So let's get over to cutting the ring into your barrel first. Before we get to work on cutting the ring, I'm going to make a quick observation and note that the little uh, cut here on the bottom for the hop-up rubber is the same depth as the cut for the ring. See, on my PDI barrel here, you, you'll notice that I've already got a G-hop on it, and I filed off the back little hop-up bridge. I'm still going to show you how to do the hop-up bridge, but I recommend doing that second, so I'm going to show you how to do it second. I've already got mine filed off because you don't need to cut the ring into your barrel to get the gun to work with the P, uh, AEG barrel. Okay, so I was mistaken. You do, in fact, need to cut the ring into your barrel. Because if you don't, your barrel can just slide right out of your gun. There's nothing to actually... Well, without the ring, your bucking cannot clip onto your barrel. And your bucking clipping onto your barrel is the only thing that keeps the barrel in your gun. Yeah, if you don't cut the ring into your barrel, it might just fall right out of your gun during gameplay. So let me show you what you're going to need to cut the ring. Now, if you don't happen to own... Uh, several thousand dollar machining equipment you're going to have to buy a few of my parts off Shapeways to get a good ring cut into your barrel. You're going to need the AEG KCO2 barrel cutter, I forget what exactly I named this but something like that and you're going to need the AEG barrel drill adapter. I'll show you how to use those in just a minute and you're also going to need a very small file with a width of about one and a half to two millimeters. Anything smaller than that will not work. You could probably use something bigger, but I have no idea how the performance will work. You're also gonna need an electric drill. Okay, so how the drill adapt, let me get this on my phone. Okay, so the drill adapter works like so. You're gonna head, go ahead and take your drill adapter and put it over the end of your barrel that does not have the hop-up window cut out. So it's the outward end of the barrel the BB leaves. For the drill adapter here, I tried to make it the right width of pretty much any barrel, but that's not really possible because the outer diameter isn't the same on every barrel. 
Now if you push it down far enough, it gets a really good grip on pretty much anything. Uh, it's wide enough to fit any barrel that I've tried. My PDI is actually the widest AEG barrel. Sorry, the widest outer board AEG barrel I've ever had. The inner bore is 6.01, so. Anyway, if your drill adapter here is too wide and it's not quite holding on to your barrel enough, just take some pliers and bend it down a little bit. You don't do it too hard or you'll break it. And then it'll get a good grip on your inner barrel. It'll be a lot tighter. You're gonna wanna put this in your drill. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna turn the it's gonna turn the barrel for you. So it'll make it a lot easier. Now you're also gonna need your file and barrel cutter. Let me reposition my camera here. Uh, we're going to see if my G-Hop survives this process. What you're going to do is you're going to hold your the barrel cutter over the end of the barrel like so. Let's see if I can get my camera to actually focus on what I want it to focus on for once. I probably better show you what this is going to do. See what this barrel cutter is going to do is it's going to hold your file right in the correct spot for where you need to cut the ring. So the drill is going to twist the barrel and you're just going to hold this file against your barrel until you cut a little ring out. Like that. Now I apologize that Sony programmed my camera to focus on the background instead of the foreground 100% of the time, so a lot of the shots probably gonna be out of focus. There's really nothing I can do about it with this camera. I apologize for that. You'll still be able to tell what's going on though. So now we're gonna get into cutting the ring. I'm gonna go ahead and put some silicone oil on the end of my barrel to make sure that the barrel cutter will rotate around it freely and things will just go a lot smoother. Okay, so I'd actually recommend holding paper towel fold over quite, folded over quite a few times between your hand and like the file and stuff because these things do tend to heat up while you're filing away. Mockingbird's trying to talk over me. But the barrel and stuff does tend to heat up while you're filing away because of how much friction there is. So the paper towel will let you hold on a little longer. You don't want to let it get too hot though or you might deform this plastic piece here. So... And you see what that's going to do is give you a nice little guideline and a beginning cut of where you're going to need to cut the ring into your barrel. Now, you can't actually cut a ring into your barrel with that. Not with a stainless steel barrel anyway. It, it would just take too long. I mean, what you're seeing right here is like 40 minutes of just putting it on the drill. And it's not an incredibly even cut either. As you can see on the back where it's got the little cutout that it can chip away material pretty fast. It's a lot deeper than, say, on the top of the barrel. So it's not really going to give you a straight cut on a stainless steel barrel. However, on a bronze barrel, it seemed to perform fairly well. It's a bit better of a cut. This is only with like five minutes, or five or ten minutes on the drill, so you might actually be able to cut a bronze barrel, or brass, sorry, I don't know why I'm saying bronze, a brass barrel or a softer material barrel with that method but it's just not going to cut it for stainless steel. So I'll show you what you need to do to finish the cut. First of all, check with your barrel and make sure that the little guideline cut, I'll call it here, is in the same spot as the ring on the stock barrel, and it is. Now you might be wondering, you know, why not just take the uh, stock barrel here and use that for a guide to mark on your barrel where you should cut the ring. That, I guess you could work with that, however, the marking is just going to come off when you start filing and when you start filing you're going to need to get a foothold for your file to, you know, begin the cut. 
so it doesn't just slide around. So by the time you actually start cutting into your barrel, you'll probably be in the wrong spot. So this uh, little cut here is going to keep your file in place. You know, it's already started off for you, so it's just going to make everything a lot easier. So to start off here, we're going to start on the back of the barrel here, where the little cutout on the bottom is, and use that for a guide. And you're going to be using the small hand file I mentioned here to cut the ring into your barrel. And you're just going to go around the barrel slowly. I'll, I'll show you more what I mean by that. But you notice here the cut on this is a little wider than my file. It's because I tried to use a diamond saw at the beginning. See, it's a little, a little wider. It's a little too wide for the cut. Actually, you might be able to make the cut wider, but I don't know how that'll affect performance. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and start here and just uh, file the ring into my barrel. See, since I had it on the drill or whatnot, I've already got a foothold for where my file should go, so it just makes this a lot easier. I don't have to worry too much about cutting it in the wrong spot anymore. However, you do have to be very careful about not cutting too deep because if you do cut into your barrel, that's going to be a very big deal. Mosquitoes everywhere right now. to move inside because the mosquitoes were getting pretty bad but as you can see you're already starting to be able to see the cut in here. This side looks deep enough. I'm gonna get the side a little lower. Okay so I guess my camera can't focus when it's zoomed in that much but as you can see here that cut's definitely deep enough. I'm going to go ahead and get out my manly pink sharpie here and just mark my file about where it's deep enough. So now I'm going to have a little reference marking here for how deep to cut it. And what you're just going to want to do is just go around your barrel a little bit at a time and just carve that ring into it. Check out what the static electricity did to the metal shavings at the end of my file. That's cool.
Okay, so now you can see I've got a nice little deep ring cut into my barrel. Uh, judging by how deep it's cut there, and if you kind of look around, some parts of it look like they need to be cut deeper. But I'm going to show you how to test and see if your cut is deep enough. Go ahead and take your KCO2 bucking here and put it on the end of your barrel. Make sure I don't mess my hour hop up with this. And the way you'll be able to tell is by looking at the edge of your bucking here. And notice how it kind of is fluted around the edge there. That makes me think I've got to shave a little more off here. And another way to make sure that you cut the ring deep enough into your barrel is to go ahead and put your hop-up chamber back together around the bucking. And if this seemed intimidating to you, cutting the ring into the barrel, it's not really that difficult. As long as you're careful, you take it slow, you make sure that you're not cutting too deep, and you just you know really pay attention, I'm sure you'll get it fine. Otherwise, if you want me to do it for you, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I am willing to modify an EG barrel to fit your KCO2. If you're willing to ship me your barrel, bucking, and actually send an email to Top Hat Aerosmithing, we'll discuss that if you're interested. So once you've got your chamber reassembled here, just go ahead and make sure that your inner barrel does not slide out. See, like, I can pull it pretty hard right now and my inner barrel is not coming out of the chamber because like without the ring this would just slide right out really easily so right now with the ring cut into my barrel this is actually gonna stay in place which is really good and another thing is the bucking actually comes out with the barrel which it didn't do before I cut the ring into it and also like I said, the end here is fluted up a bit. That'll actually also happen if you cut the ring a little too far forward. It won't only happen if it's not deep enough. But if you cut the ring too far forward, that's fine. It'll still hold on very well, like I said. In fact, it'll probably hold on better if it was in the right place. It'll definitely hold on better if it was too, than if it was too far back. So since the barrel is staying in the chamber, I know that my cut's deep enough. So let's move on to the next section. Okay, as I've already explained, I recommend cutting the ring in the barrel before you do this, but I don't really have that luxury right now, so I'm just gonna go ahead and show you how to do this anyway. So the next thing you're gonna wanna do is file off that little bridge here over the back of your hop-up window cutout so that you know it's just like the KCO2 stock barrel. What you're gonna need to do this is a little vise, or a vise, like I have, and some files. If you're working with a bronze barrel, or really any barrel, you don't want to pinch your vise down too tight because, especially with bronze, you could easily twist this so tight that it like flattens your barrel and you can't shoot a BB through it. Like I said, especially if you're working with bronze. Remember, you only want to file this thing off, so try not to file off any other parts of your barrel. Like, try not to mess up this part or anything. And there you have it. There's that one little bit of metal holding on. It's gonna need to get some pliers or scissors or something and pull that out. So I'll go get some pliers and some sandpaper, get this little bit of metal out of here, and smooth it all off. If you are going to try and file the little edges of this that the little bit of metal left off with a file, be very careful not to scratch the inside of your barrel. With a bit of diligence, it really shouldn't be too bit of a problem. The top of this is all even and flush. Now for getting the metal shards out of your barrel, I would actually not recommend running a cleaning cloth through here because, you know, metal shards being pushed along metal, it can scratch your barrel 
which if you're going for as high accuracy as possible. The next thing I'm going to go ahead and do is get out my hose and just wash water through here because that's going to be ways of getting metal shavings out of your barrel that don't like possibly lead to any scratches but as you can see here now we get a nice little you know cut all the way to the end of the barrel and be able to put a KCO2 bucking on here and get hop up. Okay one final thing to mention about modifying AEG barrels is that if you take a look here you'll notice that the hop up window cut on the AEG barrel is a lot deeper than the cut on the KCO2 stock inner barrel. So if you're using the standard KCO2 buckings with the modified AEG barrel, it's going to overhop anything lighter than 0 0.30 gram BBs. With 0 0.30 gram BBs, the hop's a little high, but it's usable, so I imagine 0.36s would be fine, but 0.43s and 0.4s, which you should probably be using anyway, um, they work fine. If you want to use lighter BBs with this gun, which you shouldn't, but if you wanted to, what you could do is get some pieces of paper. Let's get a piece of paper and just cut little squares out of it that are the same size as the sides here and super glue like one sheet of paper down and another sheet and another sheet and just a stack of them until it's the same height as the KCO2's inner barrel. And what that's going to do is it's going to hold the buckings, sorry, the hop lumps on the KCO2 buckings farther up so they're not going to be as far down into your barrel. So when your hop up is off, it's not going to over hop the lighter BBs. I know that sounds kind of ridiculous, but I really don't think it's that big of a deal. And that's everything you need to know about getting an AEG barrel into your KJW KCO2. Hope this video helped you out and told you everything you needed to know. Take care.